You need to know this. Republicans had their chance last night, and President Obama had his chance tonight. Unfortunately, Republicans squandered their chance to talk jobs during their debate last night, instead focused on more massive tax breaks for billionaires, calling Social Security a Ponzi scheme, blasting Mitt Romney's successful health care program in Massachusetts, denying global warming, and bragging about how many people Rick Perry had executed in Texas. So tonight it was up to the adult in the room, President Obama, to pitch his jobs and the jobs plan to Congress. He called it the Americans Job, the American Jobs Act. It comes complete with tax cuts for employers who hire new workers or raise the salaries of their current workers. Tax cuts for companies who hire military veterans. Tax cuts for companies who hire people who've been unemployed for more than six months. It invests in repairing and modernizing over 35,000 schools. It rehabilitates communities hardest hit by foreclosure. It jumpstarts transportation infrastructure projects all around the nation. It pushed thousands of teachers back to work. And on an individual basis, it extends the payroll tax cut. The plan also extends unemployment benefits for another year. The president claims the American Jobs Act will create jobs for construction workers, teachers, veterans, and give the long-term unemployed a shot at collecting a paycheck, too. The president promised this bill will be paid for completely by asking the super committee gang of 12 to find additional savings on top of the one and a half trillion they're already tasked with cutting. He also pledged to introduce his own deficit reduction plan in two weeks. And he told Republicans it's time to put politics aside, that these are all policies that both parties have supported in the past, and that this bill must be passed now. So will they pass it? Will it work? Joining me now for a full wrap-up of President Obama's job speech, as well as all the shenanigans in last night's Republicans debate, is Eric Burns, the former president of Media Matters for America and co-founder of Bullfight Strategies. Eric, welcome back. Thank you, Tom. Good to have you. Thank you for joining us. It's great to have you with us. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm curious your, your take on last night's debate. Uh, you know, as a <laughs> well, Texan, in fact, was, as, as, a te as a Texan, I was horrified when they clapped, you know, uh, for all the executions uh, in Texas. You know, that we have more executions in the state of Texas, I think, than any other state in the country or all the other states in the country combined or yeah, something the other to that two effect. two more in the last, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, that, that was a little disturbing. Uh, you know, as far as kind of the, the horse race, I felt like Romney really demonstrated that he was the only guy in the room that actually had a chance of really taking on Obama seriously, mm -hmm. which actually surprised me. Uh, Rick Perry did his thing, uh, which was a lot of swagger, kind of his Yosemite Sam uh, act, as I like to call it. And he was strong in the first half of the debate, but, but really started to lose steam because there's really lack of substance there. And he's going to, I think we saw that with George W. Bush. You know, Michelle Bachman, I thought really faded into the background last night. Uh, and I think we're going to see her campaign begin to fade. The one surprise was John Huntsman uh, really seemed, actually really seemed like the smartest guy in the room. Uh, the question is, can he do anything with that? Yeah, the, the problem, I thought, was that John Huntsman was playing Eisenhower. Yes. And there was a time Who would when, be a Democrat now? <laughs> it, it, well, not only that, you know, Eisenhower came along after World War II, and, and the Korean War was running in 52, and he ran, his campaign slogan was, vote for Eisenhower, vote for peace. Yeah. And he was the peace candidate. And what Americans wanted, I mean, they were war-weary, they were depression-weary, they were, what they wanted was quiet. Yes. They wanted nice, calm, quiet. And so he was the perfect guy for the time, whether he'd been a Republican or a Democrat. Yeah. Um, that's not what Americans want right now. No, it's not. And so if Huntsman tries to play Eisenhower, which he's trying to do, I think. Sure. Well, and, and, I, and I, so, you know, he's so far down in the polls, I don't know that there's enough oxygen for him to even make a play to, yeah. to, to really come back. But what I think is instructive, which is really to your point, is that, you know, we have a very different Republican Party now. The swagger of Rick Perry, just kind of the cocky Texas A&M arrogance that we saw from him, which I'm very used to seeing in Texas politics. Uh, this is the new Republican Party. They, they unapologetically get up and call Social Security a Ponzi scheme. Uh, and it's about, it's about you know, forceful leadership, whether it's right or wrong, or driving the America off a cliff. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what, in this kind of ADD media environment, unfortunately, folks kind of respond to, and clearly this Republican base responds to. But it just shows you how far to the right the Republicans have really gone. Let's talk about the, the president's speech sure. a little bit. There, there, were, there, there was one particular moment in the speech that I thought, um, actually two, that I thought really captured the whole thing. The first was in the very beginning when he talked about how um, there are all these Americans who are um, concerned that they, they, they can't put their kids through college or through mm -hmm. school, that they may be on the edge of losing their jobs. 
and he talked, he actually used the word compact, mm -hmm. which interestingly I've used a couple of times recently in my daily take. I've been using it a lot on the air. I haven't heard anybody else use it. That in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and early 80s, the compact between government and the people was that government would define the rules of business in such a way that if you had a, uh, even a high school diploma, you could raise a family. In other words, there could be a middle class. And that compact has been changed. Yes. You know, the square deal has become the raw deal. Yeah. It began with Reaganomics. And he just, he called that out. He, he did. He basically said, you know, we need to go back to that. He, he, he did, and I, look, I thought it was one of the best parts of the speech as well. I, in another part of the speech, you know, he really talked about uh, the American people are really going to, and the small businesses are going to drive this recovery, but we need to do our part in Washington. And I think what we're seeing, I hope, is the beginning of an articulation of a campaign to explain to the American people why we actually need a government of the people, by the people, because this government is a reflection of who we are. And if Democrats can't make that argument about why government is relevant, mm -hmm. especially in the wake of the, you know, the Great Recession, which was, of yeah. course, a result of a lack of government uh, involvement in the markets, uh, then I think we're in trouble. And so I was really, really pleased to see the president do that. And I think he really put the Republicans tonight in a difficult spot because he gave them a lot of what they want, which, of course, a lot of Democrats have been very upset about for a long time, but he spoke to the American people, and he really has given this Congress no excuse not to pass this bill. There's targeted infrastructure spending, which of course we know is the absolute best way to promote economic growth. Uh, as you know, you noted, uh, putting teachers back into schools. I mean, there are some great long-term and short-term things here. But it, it, it seems like one side or the other, one of the, one or the other is going to happen. That one side, so either the president or the Republicans, are going to play a game of heads I win, tails you lose. And it, the way it plays for the president is he gets this thing passed, mm -hmm. the economy picks up somewhat, it looks like he's doing things, and it helps him politically massively. Yeah. On the other hand, um, if the Rep and, and on the other hand, if the Republicans say no, he can he can he can play Harry Truman and run against the Republicans. Well, but but, but he's got to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. And 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 that's a question of whether he's willing to do that. I guess on the third hand, the third the third option is. He gets this passed. The Republicans say, okay, fine, we'll go along with this. We'll give you everything you want. And it doesn't pick up the economy as much as it could or should mm -hmm. because things take time. They do. And then they, he can't run against Congress anymore. He can't play Harry Truman. He got what he wanted. Unemployment's still at, you know, 7.5%, whatever it is, you know. And, uh, and, and they say, yeah, you know, we tried. Which way do you, how do you think it's going to play? How do you think the Republicans are going to play this thing? Well, you know, I, I hope for the good of the country that they're going to play, uh, you know, that they re recognize that at some point the American people really just want to see things happen in Washington that are going to benefit uh, the working families at home and really, really get this economy going. We don't have a loyal opposition in the Republicans in Congress. We have a very disloyal opposition, and they're heavily invested politically, as, I've, as we've talked about before, in seeing this economy crash on the rocks and seeing this president crash on the rocks. And so, you know, the real question is, can Eric Cantor... Uh, uh, Mitch McConnell and these characters that we have that are, are really throwing every wrench in the works that they possibly can overcome their partisan desire to control the White House to actually do something to help save this economy well, and, and, and get it back and, on track. And I think apropos of that, the question yeah. is, um, let, let's just play this clip from the speech. It's sure. a very, very short one here. Pass this jobs bill and we can put people to work rebuilding America. Everyone here knows we have badly decaying roads and bridges all over the country. Our highways are clogged with traffic. Our skies are the most congested in the world. It's an outrage. Building a world-class transportation system is part of what made us an economic superpower. And now we're going to sit back and watch China build newer airports and faster railroads at a time when millions of unemployed construction workers could build them right here in America? Here's what I think the question is, yeah. is will enough American people say, yeah, that's my speech, that's my guide, that's my, or that's my policy, that the Republicans take it seriously, or for that matter, the Democrats, particularly mm -hmm. the, the kind of flaky Democrats in the Senate, take it seriously. 
Well, I, I think we, we won't know the answer tonight. Essentially, if, if, if this speech ends tonight, this messaging ends tonight, then that's, you know, it's not going to be successful. Right. If this is something the president continues to beat on and we hear a drumbeat from the White House uh, and we stop the circular firing squad among progressives and liberals, which is just not helpful, yep. uh, then I think we've got a shot. And, you know, it's an interesting, interesting point. Uh, last night in the Republican debate, which I think speaks to this directly, uh, you know, we had a whole bunch of you know, Republicans, namely Rick Perry, up there saying, hey, government Government's not the solution. Government can't do anything. Government can't create jobs. Yet every one of those governors up there was bragging about the jobs they created while they were right. governors of their states. I, I know. This is a cognitive dissonance. And on, on so I, I, th I, think that the, I think that they can be forced to the table, but it's going to take a unified, full frontal assault, uh, well, you know, he messaging has said, assault. Part, part of his speech was he said, I'm going to go across the country with this message. And I hope he and does he's that. He's going to have. You're absolutely right. And he's, he's got to be right. tough. Yeah, absolutely. Tom, thank you Thanks for Thanks a lot me. for dropping by. Great to have you with us tonight. I'll have more on the president's job speech in tonight's Daily Take.